Good morning. Welcome home. Let's stand up and let's worship together this morning.
king will break his broken us to cleanse his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Then we need will bow before the lion and the lamb. And every knee will bow before him. So open up the gates. So open up the gates. Make way before the Set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb. On the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb, and every knee will bow before him. Bow before him. Your blood breaks the chain. 
Amen. Good morning. Good to see all of you uh, here in person. Good morning to all of you that are online. Welcome home. We're glad you're here this morning. And happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully not many of us in our turkey coma today. We didn't eat too much, but we hope you had a great weekend with family and friends. And if this has been a, a hard weekend for you, we're glad you're here as well. And hopefully um, we can be an encouragement to you. We've been in a series called Big Questions. And over the course of this series, we've been answering the questions of what we believe and why we believe it. And really, we've been tackling um, our articles of faith as a church that are, that are based from Scripture. And so over these last few weeks today, we're wrapping it up with our last big question. But we've taken these uh, seven, 16 articles of faith and, and broken them down into six different weeks. We covered a lot of ground, as you can see there on the screen. And today we're talking about... What's next? Uh, uh, 15 and 16, which is basically what happens after we die. And so that's our story today, our true story today. Our life here on earth is not the end of the story. Say that with me. Our life here on earth is not the end of the story. So that brings up our last question, as I mentioned earlier. What happens next? Now, if you're an atheist or you're a Christian or somewhere in between, all of us at some point in our life, if we've lived very long, have asked the question, what's next? Sometimes we ask it from a spiritual perspective, what's next after we die? And then some of us have physiological questions like, what really happens when you die? How does that all take, take place? We all ask the question, what happens next? We've also maybe heard the term Advent. This time of year with Christmas, it's the time to celebrate Jesus' first coming. And that's what Advent means. It means the coming or the arrival of Christ. But really, we celebrate Christmas as the first coming to prepare for Jesus' second coming. So when we ask the question, what happens next, what we need to realize is Christ is coming Again, and that's what our first point is today. Christ will come a second time. Say that with me. Christ will come a second time. And so if you're new this morning or you don't even know what you believe about God and you're in here, you need to know today that where we get our truth from comes from God's Word. And God's Word talks a lot about what will happen next and specifically about Christ's second coming. We're not going to cover everything that the Bible talks about when it comes to Christ's second coming, but we are going to talk about it this morning because Jesus is coming again, and we're going to learn that we're to be prepared and ready. Now, some of you have your houses prepared and ready for Christmas, and some of you, when I say that, that brings you stress because your house is not prepared and ready yet. Some of you have had family in, or maybe you've gone to somebody else's house for Thanksgiving, and they had to get their house prepared and ready but we are called to get our lives prepared and ready and get other people's lives prepared and ready for Christ's second coming. Listen to what Hebrews says. So Christ having been offered, how many times? Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many, let's read it, will appear, will appear a second time not to deal with sin like Jesus came the first time, but to save those who are what, church? Those who are eagerly waiting for him. Now, I shared this in the first service. How many of y'all just kind of get tired sometimes of all that's happening in our world? I mean, I can just tell you there is a lot of, it seems like hate and anger and political unrest. And really, that's not new. It's always been that way. And I would hear my grandparents and people say, and, you know, as I was growing up, man, I just can't wait to get to heaven. I can't wait to. For all the conflict and the stuff in this world that always seems to get us down. I can't wait for that to be over and for there to be peace. You ever just feel that way? Just, I can't wait for, I can't wait for heaven. Listen, we are eagerly waiting as believers for Jesus' return. And listen to what uh, he says in John chapter 14. And if I go, I I, if I, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will, I will come again a second time and will take you to myself that where I am, you, let's finish it, 
may be also. Jesus came the first time to prepare us in our hearts and to forgive our sins, but he's coming a second time to, for us to be able to be with him. Now, as we're reading this and learning about this, we also need to know that Christ is going to come a second time. But you need to know today, we will all be judged after we die. Let's say that. We will all be judged after we die. Now, that's not my opinion or someone else's opinion. We get that from Scripture. Listen to what it says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father. Let's read it. And will judge how many people? All people. He will judge all people according to their deeds. Listen to what our denomination says. We believe in future judgment in which every person shall appear before God to be judged according to his or her deeds in this life. And we get that from the scripture that we, we just read. So Jesus had a lot to say about what happens after we die and a lot about the second coming. Listen to what he says in Matthew chapter 25. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats at his. So there's a separation that takes place, Jesus says. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit what, church? Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. Listen, Christ has been preparing for you. As we just talked about earlier, we prepare our homes, we prepare things, we get ready. Ball teams prepare for a game. Teachers prepare for their students. Doctors and nurses prepare. We understand what it means to prepare. And God has been preparing since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you what? And you fed me. I was thirsty, and you, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. Hospitality. I was naked, and you, you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you... I was in prison and you, then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? I mean, because I was looking around and I didn't see a long guy with a beard anywhere. I mean, there was some long guys with beards, but I didn't necessarily know it was you. So when, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? I don't remember a stranger showing you or naked and give you clothing. When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the who church. The who? When you did it to one of the least of these. You were doing it to me. Heaven is the reward for those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We need to know as believers today, heaven is our reward for a life well lived, being obedient to Jesus Christ. But we are citizens of heaven, Paul says, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior Nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices what? Shame for idolatry idolatry and dishonesty, but those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. This is one of my favorite scriptures on heaven. No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Let's read that. No eye has seen, nor ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. I don't know, it was like maybe two or three years ago for Christmas time, my wife looked at me, it was like a week or two before Christmas, and she's like, I can't wait for you to open up the gift I got you. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, I can't wait. I said, well, we can just open it now if you're that excited. She's like, no, 
you need to wait. I don't remember what it was, but I'm sure it was really good. I do remember her saying that to me, I can't wait. And as I would try to imagine, you know, our kids like gifts, most kids like gifts. We'll, we'll wrap a gift and get, and my wife will wrap a gift. I want to make sure, and it's not me, but she'll wrap the gift, she'll give it to the kid, and I won't say which one, but one of them really is into it, trying to shake the box and see what's in there and guessing what it is. Sometimes they're spot on and we have to act like they don't, you know. And then other times, they're way off. No eye has seen. No ear has heard. We have some smart people in this world. And no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Amen? Heaven is the reward. <clears throat> My, many of you have lost people that were close to you and meant a lot to you. One of mine was uh, my grandpa. His name was Lloyd. And he died in, I think, uh, September of 97. I just started college in Kansas City, and I knew that he was close to passing away, so I ran down to visit him. In fact, on the way down, I kind of thought like he might pass away while I was there. He didn't, and so I went back to school. And a day or two later, he actually passed I wasn't there to witness what I'm getting ready to tell you, but some of my family was. And so I'm told, you know, he had been, he'd gotten sick and he'd been in the hospital for a long time. And when grandpa was healthy, he probably weighed 145, 50 pounds. He wasn't a big guy. I didn't get his genes. Mine came from the other side of the family. But he was a small guy, but he weighed probably 145, 150. And about the time that he passed away, he was probably like 80, 90 pounds maybe. You know, he had really lost a lot of weight, couldn't really move much. And they were, my family was out in the hallway, uh, just kind of talking and kind of waiting for him to pass. And somebody was in the room with him and, and kind of hollered, and so they all went in. And physiologically, you really can't explain what happened, but he picked his shoulders and his head up off the pillow, and he just looked up at the ceiling and just had this massive smile on his face. My grandpa was a song leader when when I was a kid and my and did and was that way till he passed and my grandma to this very day plays piano at that same church and they would play together and one of the songs that they would always play together is I'll meet you in the morning. And so she he's he's looking at the ceiling and smiling great big. And my grandmother looks at him and says, Lloyd, and she, he turned to her. He said, I'll meet you in the morning. She, he got this great big smile on his face and then put his head down and he passed. Folks, heaven is real. I want you to know that today. Heaven is real and no, mind, no eye has seen nor ears heard. No mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And I want to tell you this this morning. Some of you already know this. And some of you just need reminded of it. Maybe some of you don't know. There's no pain and suffering when we get to heaven. Aren't you glad? Pain and suffering will not be in heaven. Can I get an amen? amen. No pain, no suffering. Some of you, bless your hearts, are peacemakers. And you're constantly trying to keep the peace between people all the time. This one's blowing their stack. This one's getting mad, and you're trying to keep it all together. Can we just get together for Christmas? Can we just get together for Thanksgiving? Could you just keep your mouth shut during this time? Could you just, that's not the way. She, she's just bold. She didn't mean to say it that way. You know, all this stuff. Folks, when we get to heaven, it's not going to be like that. And some of the things that some of you have dealt with are a lot bigger than that, what I just described. Addiction not going to be in heaven. Anger, pride, conflict. Do you ever feel like the world just tries to divide people? That's not the way it's going to be in heaven. Pain and suffering will not be in heaven. Listen to what John says in Revelation. He will wipe away, how many tears? Every tear from their eyes. 
and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be, let's read it, be mourning nor crying. For the former things have passed away. Heaven is the reward for a life that's well lived. You know, the reward of having the fruits of spirit in our, in our life and love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Those are the fruits of our life. But the reward that we get for following after Jesus is heaven where there's not pain, there's not suffering. And no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has in store for those who love him. Heaven is real. If I've stopped the message here this morning, I wouldn't be honest being honest with you. Again, where we get this whole thinking is from God's word. This is what God's word tells us. He tells us that Christ is coming again. He tells us that we'll be judged according to our deeds. Tells us that heaven is real and he's preparing a place for us. But he also tells us that hell is real. Hell is the reward for those whose names aren't written in the Lamb's book of life. That's a true story. Some of you have maybe been in churches before where they pound this all the time. And it's motiv- you know, the, the motivating factor is to try to scare people. I, I'm not trying to scare anybody with this topic today. But I also have to be honest with you in telling you that the Bible talks about this. Hell is a real place. Jesus said in that same scripture I was reading earlier about the ones on the left, on the right. He also talks about the ones on the left. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. Why? Because I was hungry and you didn't what, church? You didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you... I was a stranger and you... I was naked and you... You didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you... We had a guy in our church for years. He's passed away now. His name was Ron Albright. Some of you who've been around a while know Ron. When I think of prison ministry, I think of Ron. Ron had such a passion to go over to the Gerard County Jail. I think he did it about every week. He would go over and have a, just a Bible study with some of the inmates and just share Christ with them. I was in sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Well, of course, they, then they reply, well, hang on just a minute, Lord. When did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? Because if I would have known it was you, God. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters. The least of these. Say that with me. The least of these. We tend to help people that are in the same socioeconomic background as us or tend to have the same life situations as us. We tend to invite people over to our house that will invite us over to their house. But here, we see a different language. We see the least of these. For students, it's not the popular kid at school that you're trying to emulate or you want to get next to. It's the least of these. You refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters. You were refusing to help who? Me, meaning God. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go where? Into eternal life. Jesus is the only plan to receive heaven and avoid hell. Say that with me. Jesus is the only plan to receive heaven and to avoid hell. That's why Christmas and Easter is such a big deal. Christ came. Advent means coming. Christ came into the world bringing hope. Prior to Jesus, we didn't have any hope. In fact, there was 400 years of silence where nothing is said. 
And then Jesus comes into the picture. And he, takes, he comes and he dies and he resurrects to life, living a sinless life. And as a result of that, we can have a relationship with him. There are not many, if you're listening online, there are not many roads to God. There is one way to God, and it's through Jesus Christ. So when we ask the question, what happens next? Jesus is coming again. We're all going to be judged. I was talking to somebody one time, and and they said to me, well, I'm not that spiritual. I don't really do any of that, but I have a relative that is. It was almost like in some weird way, you know, it's like when you go somewhere and I'm with them and they let you behind the scenes or something. Listen, we don't get judged off of grandma. You know, I have my, grand, my, I'm my heritage. I've got some strong pillars of faith in my specific family. But I don't stand before God and say, hey, I'm with Lloyd and Norma. <laughs> Can you get in like that? My wife has a couple grandparents, Dave and Betty. I, I'm, I'm with Dave and We can't do that. We all stand there before our, by ourselves and give an account for our life. Well, I'm in with my godly wife. I, I'm with her. We stand there by ourselves. We're judged. Heaven is a reward. And hell is a reward for not being faithful and not living for Christ. So here's my question today. Pretty straightforward this morning. Straight to the point. Are you ready for what happens next? Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Man, if you've been going to Pitt Naz very long, you've heard Pastor Jim Sucraw or myself or somebody else ask this very same question a lot. Some of you have sat in here and heard this over and over and over. And every single time you've heard it, you know you're not ready and you've let it pass by. And I'm just asking you simply again, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you ready? Are you prepared? And if you would say, yes, I'm ready, then what about other people? I'm going to tell a story on myself real quick. When my kids were little, I wasn't always the most observant person in the world with my wife. And there were times where I'd be sitting in the car waiting to go somewhere, wondering what's taking her so long. And so when my, my boy got older, Noah got older, he'd say, what, what takes mom so long? Well, she's cooking the food to take somewhere. She's getting the kids ready. And the thought crossed my mind, maybe I should go help her. And I thought, nah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and then at one other time, my wife said, well, this would go quicker if you would help. And then she said this, you got yourself ready, why don't you help get some other people ready? It's real easy when all you have to do is get yourself ready, what about all these other people? Well, it's hard to argue with that. Part of us being ready is understanding that we're called not to just be, get ourselves ready, Jesus is the one that makes us ready, amen? But it's spending the rest of our life, once we're ready, having a burden for other people to come to know Christ. So my question is twofold. Are you ready? Do you know Jesus? And if you don't, you need to know that you can be ready this morning. Jesus died. He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But the second part is this. Parents, are your kids ready for heaven? Are your kids, is your husband ready for heaven? Is your wife ready for heaven? Are your co-workers ready for heaven? Are the students that you go to school with ready for heaven? 
And one of the best ways that you can show who Jesus is is by the way you live your life. Do people see the fruit of Jesus in you or are they confused by the things that you say, by the way that you act? Does your life point to how to be ready or not? As the band comes up this morning, I want us just to bow our heads and close our eyes for just a minute. If you're in that category where you would say, man, I, I'm not ready. I've been around church. I've gone to church with my husband or I've gone to church with my wife or I'm, I've been here a long time. But if you're just being honest with me, I don't know that I'm ready. If that's you this morning and you'd like to be ready, there's a couple things that need to happen. First of all, you need to acknowledge that you can't save yourself. You just tell God that. You need to admit that you're a, sin a sinner. And then we have to believe that Jesus made a better way. And all you have to do is to say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised to life. I believe that you're coming again. I believe that I know that I'm going to be judged. And I invite you into my heart. I invite you to come in and save my soul. I make you the Lord of my life. And here's the big thing, guys. Would you consider telling God this? Lord, you have permission at any time in my life to stretch me change me, mold me, shape me into what you want me to be. I accept you as my personal Savior. If you prayed that prayer or you rededicated yourself with every head bowed and every eye closed, we're not going to embarrass a single person, but would you just slip your hand up as a testimony this morning? God, you see those hands. But here's the second group. You have a relationship with Jesus. But you just kind of got yourself ready. You, accept, you invited Jesus into your heart. But you don't really have a burden for other people. And my thought today from Scripture is just simply asking God to give you a burden for someone. Maybe you work with someone, maybe you go to school with someone. Would you consider, Lord, just, just praying for them? In fact, I want you to think of someone right now that you know maybe doesn't have a relationship with Jesus. For some of you, that's pretty easy to think of somebody. It's just they're on the top of your tip of your tongue. But as I ask that question, who's the first person that comes to your mind? Would you begin to commit to pray for them? Lord Jesus, I pray for each person that they're thinking of right now. Father, we have prodigal names on these prodigal boards and other people, Lord, who don't know you. I pray, Lord, that you would begin to put a burden in our hearts to pray for the people around us. Lord, eternity is a really long time. And I pray, Lord, that we'd be ready and we'd be about our Father's work getting other people ready. Father, we give you praise and glory for who you are. We thank you in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. Let's stand together this morning. Before we get into our worship, we have these altars up here. And it's a place where we can come and we can confess sin. It's a place that we can come and, and just be encouraged. It's a place that we can come and say, God, would you take this? Just give it to God. Maybe this morning you'd like to come and pray for someone else or pray for yourself. 
Maybe you'd like to come up and give God praise for how he's done something for you. Maybe you just want to come up and pray in general. We'd invite you to do that. Let's just take some time and let God speak to us this morning.
Jesus, we thank you for your love. Father, I pray that we would just bask in your presence today. Father, if there's people that have come in here today with some big hurts, some big pains today, Father, would you just be especially close to them? Lord, as we move into this time of year with Thanksgiving and Christmas, Father, there's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of reminders maybe of something that's not right in their family or whatnot. Father, I pray that you would just be especially close to them. May they know, Lord, your love. May you give them the love of Christ for others. Lord, others maybe have lost someone close to them, and this is a tough time of year. Father, would you surround them, Father, with your love during this time. Father, thank you for the hope of heaven. Thank you for the grace, Lord, that we all can have because you did the work on the cross. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated just real quick. God is good, amen? He's so good. Hope you have a great weekend. I've got just a couple reminders this morning before we get out of here today. One, if you are new and you haven't filled out a Connect card, we encourage you just to fill a Connect card out. It should be there in front of you there in a chair. You can grab that, fill that out, and drop that in one of the offering boxes on either side of the sanctuary. Then don't forget, we're having, a baby, we're having baby dedications next Sunday. We're excited about that. We get to dedicate some babies. So if you're interested in that and you haven't signed up your baby, you can sign up on our website or the Church Center app. And that'll be next Sunday. Also, every year we do something different for Christmas time. We've formally adopted Pittsburgh Middle School, and we try to do something for them every year. This year, when we got a hold of them, they didn't have a massive need, so we were actually able to meet that need without coming to you. But what we did find out was is that Southeast High School, which is actually about 15 or 20 miles from here, they are needing a food drive, and so we said we could help with that. So this will go to families and kids in the community there, and so... Um, Remember where it talked about when I was hungry and you fed me? So that's what I was thinking about. So make sure that they have food during their holidays. So we're looking for some non-perishable items. And you can donate that in the bucket in the lobby. And then if you don't have time to go and grab some perishable items, you can make a donation on the Church Center app. And then ladies, we're having a women's ornament exchange December 18th. Say that with me. December 18th, women's ornament exchange from 5 to 8, bring a wrapped ornament to exchange, bring a dessert to share, and then it says, wear your best thrift store formal outfit. All right, thrift store formal outfit. So there you go. You can go do that. And then we're really excited. We're having a Christmas Eve service. We're excited about this. We hope that you'll come out and be a part of that on Christmas Eve. It'll be at 7 o'clock. It'll be a 45-minute service. We're going to read some scripture. We're going to sing some, some just traditional Christmas songs. We're going to remember what Christ has done for us. That'll be on Christmas Eve. And then on the way out, if you haven't already, we have the Advent devotional. All the pastors got together and helped put this together. 
So you'll just read a scripture, and then there's a little thought that goes along with that, so make sure and grab that. And then if you're a college student, last thing, we have a college retreat coming up at Camp Table Rock Lake, January 7th through the 9th, and it's for ages 19 to 30. So you don't have to be in college, but just in the ages of 19 to 30. You can register um, on the CTR website, or you can talk to Pastor Matt. So those are our announcements. Let's stand together this morning. We hope that you have a great weekend. Start back next week. Everybody's excited for Monday, right? (laughs) Hey, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Have a blessed Sunday.